This is a demo of getting WebSockets to work using Clojure and ClojureScript. For the server, I'm using Webit, and for the client, I'm using uh, Google Clojure and ClojureScript. So Google Clojure has a WebSocket class. Let's start with the server. I'm a, you can pause at any time to see the code. Uh, the idea here is not to give you all the code. Uh, so you can just copy and paste, but if you do want to see anything in particular in the code, you can pause it and take a look. I went to the Webit page and found out which jar I needed, and then I used LineNGIN and threw Webit in the dependencies and ran line depths so it would go to Maven and find out uh, what all the jars I needed were. Line 2.0 throws those in a local repository. I went and I guess I went and found them or grabbed them or whatever and threw them in my um, idea project so that they would show up in the uh, class path of my local REPL. Then I went and found an example of how to create this uh, web server with uh, Webit and specify your port, specify your path, uh, you proxy this WebSocket handler uh, for the on open uh, uh, method. We're going to call this function, which just prints out opened and then a two string of the connection on close, same thing. And on message, we're going to call uh, our on message function with a connection and what used to be JSON. We can see an example of opened and closed with that two string connection. And on message simply takes the connection in the message and sends the message right back down the connection. So at this point, it's an echo server just to make sure this is working. That is our server. Now we have our uh, the web page. Now I have another video on YouTube that shows uh, where all these jars uh, come from or how you create them to get closure script working and compiling. So here we have our build uh, closure to get that all going. You can take a look at that if you need to. And then we have a simple web page which loads up uh, the Google dependency gear in base.js. And then once that's completely loaded, we have a new script tag uh, that loads up our uh, uh, closure script compiled to JavaScript dependencies. And then once that's done, we say that in this page, uh, we tell Google that we need zombunity.gui and zombunity.core, those two namespaces. And all we need core for is just to call Zombunity Core Register Listeners. Register Listeners uh, will go to all the namespaces that need to listen to events like WebSocket and GUI, call their registered listeners. And WebSocket uh, listens for the input event and then calls send, listens for the connect event, calls connect, disconnect, calls disconnect. And if you want to see, you can see the dispatch code, uh, Zombunity Dispatch. I have the, an atom holding the listeners. You register a listener with a key and a function, and it just puts that into a set of functions that are called when that uh, when we dispatch on that key. And then you can call the dispatch function, given a key and the data that you want to send out. And for every function it finds associated with that key, it will call the listener a function that takes that data. So it calls that function with the data. Back to, so that was uh, registering listeners. Now back to our page here, that's register listeners. And now we have a button that we can click that we'll call GUI connect. And then we also have uh, an input field called text that we'll put our, or sorry, called mud input that we'll put our commands into. And then we'll have a button called send, which we'll call zombie GUI send. And add as text, which we'll call zombie GUI text. And then we have our text area where we'll put all the results from the server or anything we just send uh, as text here. Uh, and that's going to be called text. So it's a text area called text. So these all go out to GUI. You'll see that I have a GUI namespace that handles all this GUI stuff. So the first one we'll cover is that connect button. So that connect button calls out to uh con discon button calls up to GUI connect so we'll go to there and that just uh, sends up an event called connect and GUI is not listening for connect but WebSocket is listening for connect and it says uh, call the connect function the connect function will create a new Google closure Google.net WebSocket and you can see up here we have in our namespace zombie WebSocket 
and we're requiring goog.net dot websocket and then we're giving it the alias ws and we're requiring zombudity dot dispatch as dispatch so we can uh, tell dispatch what things we're listening for. So here is creating that websocket with that new the new operator the dot and we store that in a websocket uh, atom. We have an atom called websocket and then we uh, register some event listeners with that websocket. And we use that WS uh, alias to the goog.net.websocket namespace, and we grab the event type enum, and we're listening for the message event, the open event, the closed event. We're calling on message, on open, on closed. And once we've registered all those listeners, then we call open. So that's the connection. We're now connected. That was the connect button. We also have the send button, which calls GUI send. GUI send will again just dispatch out that input event and it'll grab the value of the input field and send that as the data for the event. We're not listening in GUI for that input event, but we are listening in WebSocket again for that input event and it calls send. Send grabs that WebSocket out of the atom that we just stored, calls send with the message, which is the data we just uh, dispatched with that input event. That'll send it to the server. We saw earlier, the server will simply send that back. It's just an echo server at this point. We also have uh, in our web page, we had uh, this text, uh, GUI.text, add as text button. So we'll go look at that. Uh, uh, text, the function text, and we're just testing out local dispatch. So it'll dispatch out the text event again with that mud input value. Now we are listening for text in this one. It's just a local test of dispatch. It'll call display text. So it doesn't do much. It just says test the dispatch system. Make sure that when we hit this button, it's actually going to dispatch the event, and then we're that and that make sure we're listening for the event. It'll call display text, and it'll just put it in that. Uh, it'll just put it in this uh, sort of uh, received text field there. All right. So now we have we've gone over send. We've gone over text. We've gone over connect. Now. We left off what happens when we send out, when we hit send, it sends out to the server and it comes back. When it comes back, we added this event listener uh, to call, when we get a message, to call on message. Here's our on message function right here. It gets an event. This is a WebSocket event. When we get that event, we're going to dispatch our own event, our own local dispatch system called message for now. And we're going to get the message property of that WebSocket event and use that as the data for our message event that we've dispatched locally. We're not listening for message here, but back in GUI, we are listening for message. So when we hear a message event, we call display text. Again, you saw that earlier when we called text, it called display text. Now when we get message from the server, it calls display text as well. And again, it just goes and finds that text field and sets the value of that text field to be the text that we got from the server a new line, and then whatever was in there before. The only thing I think we have left is when we have uh, when we have the connection opened and closed, and when we disconnect. So when you call, when we uh, hear an open event, we dispatch out con open. When we get a close event on that WebSocket, we call out the uh, close event locally, and we're not listening for them down here, but we are listening for them in our GUI so that we can change our button from connect to disconnect or connect uh, disconnect to connect and change our status and the other thing we have left is when we hit disconnect so uh, when we hit connect on this button it'll change the value of the button to disconnect and it'll change the function that is called to GUI disconnect so we'll see in GUI we also have a disconnect function which will call the disconnect event, which WebSocket will hear and call disconnect, which will call close on the WebSocket we stored in the atom, and then it'll just reset that atom to be nil. So we're not storing, we don't no longer have a WebSocket that we can open or close, which may or not may or may not be necessary. So we'll test this out. We can see uh, we're already connected. We haven't opened there, so let's disconnect that just to make sure. So now we're closed. Now let's connect again. Now we're connected again. 
and we can clear this out. We'll do a local dispatch. We'll call this add as text, which will just send, uh, I think it's a text event, which the GUI namespace itself will see, and we'll call display text. Bang, call display text. Now we'll do remote dispatch. The server, this is going to send out the um, input event, which the WebSocket, my WebSocket namespace will catch and we'll call send, we'll send to the server. That will fire off a message event, which GUI then will pick up, and it'll call display text with the message that we got. So that was a round trip to the server. There is how to get a closure script web page to use Google Closure's WebSocket class to connect to a Webit closure server that has WebSockets. So we'll just look at, there's the build script again, there's core, which just calls uh, the reg uh, register listeners. Here's our dispatch function again. Here's some tests that I've commented out because uh, you can't compile those into closure uh, as closure script into JavaScript. DOM helper helper is just some convenience functions to get into Google's goog.dom and their convenience functions get element and then I call uh, get value on an element. And here's our GUI, our whole GUI file. That is all the back end for uh, the web page. And here's our web socket where the meat of the communication happens. We need goog.net.webSocket and our dispatch gear. On open, unclose, on message, send, connect, disconnect, and register listeners. And then we have our web page. Real simple. And then this is the JavaScript that gets compiled to show our dependencies. And then uh, it's not very interesting to see all the JavaScript that is created to handle all of our closure script. Looks much better in closure script. So there you have it. That is how to use WebSockets with closure script and closure.